What are greenhouse gases? Uh, excluding water vapor, carbon dioxide is the most abundant of the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. Uh, this graph is showing carbon dioxide increased by about 20% in the last 40 years uh, based on air samples taken on Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Uh, so trying to get a, as clean, a pristine, far away from you know, huge populations of people uh, reading as possible. Uh, so, how do they affect global warming? Uh, there appears to be a correlation between the increase in carbon dioxide and an increase in temperature change. Right, so we can follow the, uh, the graph and see this increase of CO2, and if we overlap this with a temperature uh, graph, we would see uh, that those do overlap. So that brings us to the thermometer record. Okay, in this one, these are just straight uh, temperature measurements with a thermometer. It appears that the average air temperature has increased since 1860. Thermometers have been used to measure temperatures for the last 140 years. Uh, this direct measurement shows an atmospheric warming trend. The evidence for global warming, the warming of the atmospheric temperatures from a point in the past, is found through this data set and the ones that are coming uh, after this, um, the proxy data sets. Uh, the temperature of rocks underground is controlled by the temperature of the atmosphere and by the temperature of deeper rocks. So the measurement of temperatures in boreholes can be calculated to see if the predicted temperature matches the, actually, the actual temperature. Uh, this red curve models global temperatures and suggests increases since 1920. Okay. Um, we've also got increases, uh, if you look at the blue line, we see increases starting around the mid-1800s. Uh, glacier length. Glacier length is a function of atmospheric temperatures and precipitation, and the dynamics of glacier flow are well studied. A correlation of glacier length to past temperatures suggests a recent warming. Again, so take a look at the red line. We can see we hit about 1850 and start climbing. The tree ring proxy. Uh, tree ring growth is partly dependent on climate. The growth record shows an increase in air temperature starting around 1850. Sound familiar? Right? We've got some ups and downs along the way. Um, but reaching up uh, to the highest point where we are now uh, in a thousand years. Right? So that's, that's pretty significant. All right, more proxy data sets. Uh, the ice core data set uh, gives a fairly straightforward record of atmospheric isotopic age, uh, excuse me, gas compositions, some of which are uh, able to correlate with air temperature. So again, take a look at the graph. What's going on? Things are pretty steady for a while. They dip down and then they go higher than they've been um, in the last more than a thousand years. Okay, uh, so just before 1800, in this case, we show an increase. The coral proxy uh, corals incorporate isotopes into their skeletons, and these coral records can be a proxy for atmospheric temperature. So uh, again. This shows a slight warming in surface seawater, but also a warmer period earlier in the 1700s and 1800s. So if we think about water and uh, the buffer that it provides, that makes a bit more sense, right? The way it heats up more slowly and releases heat slowly. What has happened to the temperature 
in the last 100 years. So when viewed together, the temperature proxy data sheets strengthen the case for global warming. The National Academy of Science reported to Congress in 2006 that Earth's atmosphere has warmed 0.6 degrees centigrade in the last 100 years and that the last few decades have been hotter than any time in the last 400 years. All right, so how has the amount of CO2 changed in the last 100 years? It appears to be increasing, right? If we take a look at this graph, we've got the red line rep representing the CO2 concentration, uh, and it's up and down, up and down, up and down, um, but as we get closer to the present, right, if we look at the bottom scale, we're looking way, way back uh, into the geologic record. Um, so it looks like about at the base of the, the red line closest to the zero, it just spikes way up and it's now at, at the present time higher than it's ever been. Okay, so we can take a look at the temperature and do the same thing. While the temperature is not higher than it's ever been, it's uh, it's reaching that point, right? So what is the main source of CO2? Uh, the main source is the burning of fossil fuels such as coal and gasoline. Okay, so if we want to break it all down, we can take a look at our annual greenhouse gas emissions by sector. Um, and the largest sector is going to be uh, fossil fuels. So whatever, either that's transportation fuels or power stations that are using coal um, and so on. Uh, but each of these is con contributing greenhouse gases to our atmosphere. Um, of that, you can see on the bottom it's broken down uh, based on carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. So the largest contributor for uh, carbon dioxide is power stations. Okay, so this is something you have control over. Think about this. When you leave your TV on or you flip your lights on, uh, most of the power in the U.S. and 50% of it in Arizona comes from coal. So when we're burning coal, we're putting CO2 into the atmosphere. So if you, you turn off that light switch or you get a more efficient um, anything really, a more efficient light bulb to a more efficient refrigerator, you're, when you save on your own energy costs, you are also saving the amount of CO2 that's being emitted by that power station. All right, the next one for methane, the largest contributor is agricultural byproducts. So uh, methane is the bad smell that you get when you drive past a, a feedlot or past an area with a lot of cows. Okay, it, it's also produced by any sort of decay of uh, plant material. So if you go to a swamp, you're gonna you're gonna smell methane. So uh, when cows eat food and they break it down, they are releasing methane. Uh, it is a byproduct of having uh, millions of cows. Okay, so that that's a consideration as well. That's something you have control over, right? If the demand for cows goes down, then the amount of methane goes down. Uh, nit nitrous oxide, also the largest contributor is uh, agricultural byproducts. So all of this is leading up to what are some possible environmental consequences of global warming. Uh, so we could have changing weather patterns and climate. Uh, with the increased temperature and increased ocean temperature, we're going to have more intense storms, right? With more heat in the ocean's water, it can fuel larger hurricanes, uh, species and habitat changes, and sea level changes. So that uh, takes us to the last page in your notes, which is going to be your homework. 
uh, use the book to answer the questions regarding uh, glaciers and sea level changes and email your answers uh, to me before the quiz closes uh, at the end of the week. Good luck!